do this in your notebook now. A net force of 20 newtons. Point two newtons acts on a 0.27 kilogram mass. What is the acceleration? Oh, this is easy, right? I'm not gonna show them. They're working hard right now doing it to some themselves. <laughs> some have left the room to find their calculator. today with our calculator within arm's reach away. Okay, 0. 0.270 and I get 0. 0.74. Yeah. 0. 0.74. Sweet. The resulting acceleration is 0. 0.74 meters per second squared. You want to just turn this off? Yeah, let's turn it off. Atwood right. machine. Where it gets fun over the falls. Okay, this is our Atwood machine. Have they seen this before? Is this the nope. first time? No, nope. okay. this is the first time. Okay, um, the first thing I want you to do is make a sketch. There's a track with a cart that moves, there's a string that goes to a pulley. And how much mass does this have? 20 grams. Or 0.2 kilograms. School's up. So there's the setup. And we said mass here was 0.2 kilograms, right? 0.2 of kilograms. You should have a diagram that looks like that. Cute, huh? Okay, so you've made a sketch of the equipment. Next step, I can't read upside down. Um, set up the lab quest two. That's this. That's this boy. And we're gonna run a trial. How could we get the acceleration from the data collected? Okay. All right. So in order to run this thing, we're just gonna push the play. We're button. gonna have to do teammates here. Yeah. So do you want to catch the thing, or should I catch the thing? Well, uh, you hit the button. I'll start and stop the thing, okay? Okay, all right, ready? Hit the button. Set, go. Ah. Did you stop it? Yeah, not bad. This is what mine looks like. Sweet. So, first off, what kind of graphs do we have here? On the top here, we've got a distance versus time graph, and you, it's hard to tell, but if you were to look at it, here's this angle, you'd see that there's a nice gentle curve there. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, it's a distance versus time graph. It's curved. That means we are accelerating. If it were, that's right. If it were straight, it'd be constant velocity, but mm -hmm. it's curved, mm -hmm. so that's accelerating. Yeah, and then we have a velocity versus time graph here, and we have a straight line, which makes sense because we are, the slope of the line here is acceleration, constant acceleration here. How can we get some data out of it? Get ready to write some data down, boys yes. and girls. So uh, how could you get the acceleration from the data collected? Well, what kind of data you got? Uh, well, we want to calculate the acceleration. The slope of my velocity versus time graph, which is a straight line here, will get me the acceleration. So couldn't I just use these data points? So I click so in the there's the beginning. original one. Velocity, time. There's our final one. Should we write these numbers down? I think they should write these numbers yeah. down. What's the equation for acceleration that you can draw on? We got two times. This is an ugly black marker. <laughs> it writes ugly. Okay. All right, final what velocity. Final velocity is 0.918 meters per second. Okay. And the time at that final velocity is 0.822. Great, got him. All right, let's go to this earlier data point here. And so the velocity original 
is 0.446 meters per second and the time original is 0 0.0348 seconds. There's so much precision. Calculate the acceleration, boys and girls. You do can it. do this. Do it. Four, four, six divided by point eight two two minus 0.0348. I get 0.599. How many should we go three decimal places? I call that 0.60. Okay. Gosh, don't you hate it when the decimals they make it so that you have to round all the way to that one number? 0.60 uh, meters per second squared. Okay. Our experimental acceleration. Acceleration. I'm just gonna make a note of that. Okay, what's next here? If the mass of the car is 250 grams, what is the total mass accelerating? Assume it mass is true. Okay, okay, so. Okay, the car is 250 grams, and the little hangy down thing is 20 grams. Okay. That's two. That's 250 or 0.250 kilograms. Okay, so this plus this will give me the total mass. Total mass. Right? Because that string ties everything together. I don't even. <laughs> mass is going to equal 0 0.270 kilograms. Kilogramage. Uh, and to show your work, this plus this. I just, you know, did it in my head. Um, okay. Uh, what's next? What should be the net force causing this total mass acceleration? The net force. A okay, net force is equal to m times a, right? Yeah. We have both of those here, yes? So 0 0.270 kilograms times 0 0.60 meters per second squared. This, this is kind of fun. It's easy. It's easy. Okay, 0. 0.270. Just wish the students were here to play with this stuff. I know, this is way more fun. Trust me, you guys would love this. Uh, I get 0. 0.162. 162 newtons. Sweet. All right, now something needs to be said about what the string does. And so if you move the cart, you take the mass off and move the cart, as the cart moves, what, so does the little thing. They're tied together. One goes up, one goes back, whatever speed one's going, the other one goes. That's a very important point. All right. Atwood machine. Atwood. Uh, which one, maybe we did that one, this one, right? Uh, make a free body diagram. Oh, make free body diagrams showing the masses and forces acting on them appropriate to this trial. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this one right here, this one right here, and what mass, what, what forces are acting on this? Well, what's always working here on the surface of the earth? Always gravity. And then, what's the opposite of end? I'm going to say that this one should be smaller. Ooh. I like that better. Yeah. So you got the normal force because the caused by the track. <laughs> so we don't have a normal force here. Is this hanging from the string? got some sort of force of tension here. And they're equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And the reason that these two arrows are not the same is because our force of gravity is different because our masses are different. Right. Okay. Uh, is this all of them? Uh, that's your free body diagram. Yeah. What's next? Okay, so... Okay, we have the experimental stuff. Now let's talk about the ideal stuff. The ideal predicted, predicted results are found using known laws or theories. Huh, we know some, some laws and theories we can oh, use. Oh, yeah. Calculate what the ideal, with no friction, acceleration would be based on the starting point of this trial. 
Huh. Yeah, you can do it over there, sir. Separation here. So that's force equals mass times acceleration. Yeah. You want to find the acceleration. Okay, so the force equals the mass times acceleration. Yeah, what's the acceleration here? Oh, yeah, what's no, the we're acceleration? Gonna, we're going to calculate the acceleration. So acceleration equals force over mass net. Um, what is our mass? A point two seven oh. Point two seven. Point two seven, right? Yeah. Okay. Point two seven oh kilograms. And, and the only force that we know for sure is the force of gravity acting on the little hangy down thing. Mm-hmm. The little hangy down thing. Gravity on the little hangy down thing. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be 0.2 times ten. 0.2 times negative 10. We don't care about that negative, right? It's direction. We got we got a diagram showing it. 0.2. So that's going to be 2, right? 0.2 times 10? Oh, yep. 10, yeah. Okay. So we got, oh, no. Uh, right? Let's see. 20 grams is 0 0.020 kilograms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's going to be 0 0.02. Oh, shoot. Did I mess up my calculations up here? Oh, no. These ones are all good. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. We're good here. 0 0.02. 0 0.02 gives me... Oh. Point two. Yeah. Uh, so I, I messed up. Um, well, I didn't really mess up. The mass is uh, point two seven zero. But right here, make this look good. Point oh two kilograms. Kilograms right here times, times 10. ten gives me point two newtons up here. Just some technical difficulty. Um, okay, so plug into our calculator. Point two divided by. Oh, that's two. 0 0.270 and we get for our ideal acceleration 0.74 meters per second squared. So that's the ideal acceleration. How does that compare to what we actually got? Oh, that's hmm. a lot. That's more. There's yeah. the actual, the experimental. Versus the, the ideal. ideal. In a perfect world. Okay. <laughs> What's next? Um, so we calculated the acceleration for ideal. Now we have to calculate the experimental divergence from the ideal error. Basically, what's the difference? Um, what's that equation for it? I don't know why it didn't print out oh, on the Oh, that's one. weird. Here's our equation. Percent difference equals experimental minus ideal over ideal minus one, or times 100%. So the experimental so, is 0. 0.60. 0. 0.60 minus... 0.74 meters per second squared divided by 0 0.60. 0 0.60 meters per second squared. And that's going to get me. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. 0 0.6 minus 0.74 divided by 0 0.6. And I get negative 0.2. 2, 3. That's negative 20%. Yeah, negative 0.23 times 100. That's a 23% error. What does a negative mean? Well, it means that the experimental was less than the ideal. Yeah, and if you if you were like, Miss Moore, that doesn't make any sense. If you flip-flop these numbers, you're still going to get 23%. That's, That's your, right. your margin of error. <clears throat> it's the um, difference. It's the difference. Uh, is there a... Oh, I'm not doing that one. Next. How could we find, oh, the force of friction. Oh, how could we find the force of friction? Well, I'm gonna have to turn this bad boy. <laughs> Warm her up. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Do it. I don't think we Do we have the numbers anywhere? Write down oh what God. the experiment, what down what the ideal is. The ideal. Acceleration. Per second square. Just so we've got it. <laughs> so quick. Anything that works with a pulley and a string is called an Atwood machine. Atwood, Atwood. Okay. Named after some guy. The pulley only changes the direction of the force. 
go here. So gravity is down, but it changes the direction for this. Important questions. What force is causing the acceleration? What total mass is accelerating? Well, when I take away this thing here and I let go, what force is pulling it down? Force of gravity on the little hanging down thing. Yeah, the force of gravity. And then uh, what is our total mass? What total mass is accelerating? We have those up together, right? 0.27 yeah. kilograms. It's this guy. Plus. Yeah, and that little guy right there. He's so cute. I know. He's so cute. <laughs> uh, next question, please. Next slide. Ideally, force equals mass times acceleration. Um, could be used to predict acceleration. Did That's we do that? We, did. we already did that. I'm like, 0.74 meters per second squared. And what did we use? Let's see. The force we used was the gravity on the little hanging down thing. Mm -hmm. We used this guy right here. And the mass was the... Uh, Total mass. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We did not use this force. We used this force. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ideally, right? Because of negative 10 meters per second squared and the mass of this, um, of, of our, our little hangy down thing, we can use this to calculate the ideal acceleration. We can measure the acceleration experimentally, which we just did. We did. We did. Beautiful. Wake up, you. There he is. Yeah. Remember this? Yeah, we, we just calculated the slope and we found the acceleration. From the data. Nice. Why does the experimental not match the ideal? Why did we get that 23% uh, margin of error? That negative 23%? Well, what are we not accounting for here? Hmm. We were just talking about it the other day. Force of friction. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay. Um, so, uh, in order to understand how to calculate the force of friction, we have to do three steps. Yep. Um, make a series of diagrams. Step one, set up as given with all the forces, like this, like we already did. Then we're going to straighten out the string and rotate the forces as appropriate. And lastly, eliminate the string between the masses. We haven't done that yet, have we? We haven't done it. We should do it. All right. Okay, so step one was to just draw as is, right? Yeah. Okay, and we need to draw our forces on here? Actually, what we want is free body diagram. Oh, uh... Or actually, you know what? No, that's good, we, because you can put the numbers in it. Yeah, I mean, we can do it either way. Yeah. They can be dots, they can be boxes, whatever floats your boat, right? In this case, uh, boxes are better. This one was point... Point oh two. <laughs> Struggling. And then where are our forces here? <laughs> Come on, help us. Okay, force of gravity is. Oh. Normal okay. force. Force of tension. Force of tension. And the force of friction, we have a force of friction in here? Not yet. Uh, I think, oh, okay. We have to wait to put it in, though. We don't Not, know how big to draw the arrow. Nah, put it in there. Okay. Force of friction. Okay. Okay, what was the next thing we do? Well, hold on. Before we go further, we can we can ignore some things, right? So what, to, what things can we ignore? The ones that cancel each other out. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, okay, yeah. Well, next step now. <laughs> Straighten the string. Okay. Uh, so I've got my thing here. Okay, 0. 0.250 kilograms. Okay, kilograms. Draw my forces. Force of friction. Of gravity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
What? Am I good? Let's find out. I, that glare, I couldn't see what was on the Oh, board, you're, so. you're closing the blinds. I was like, what is he doing? What is he doing? Okay, so I straighten out the string and I've got the force of tension. I'm sorry, the force of friction that way, force of tension this way, force of tension this way, force of gravity this way. Okay. Okay, last step. Eliminate the string between the masses. Sweet. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is going to be 0 0.270 kilograms. Force of tension, point, uh, force of friction, I'm sorry. Point you saw way. what she did there. She combined the two masses together. Sweet. And then force of friction still that way. And then... Don't need to have a force of tension. Get rid of the string. And then our force of gravity is this way. Keep in mind, arrows may not be drawn to scale, but because we don't know what the force of friction is yet. Okay. Uh, now what? Um, any force of gravity balance. Pull the screen down for a minute. I can't read it. <laughs> any force of gravity balanced by a normal force does not cause acceleration. So we, that's why you cancel we, them out. Yeah, we cancel those out in the very first diagram. Um, friction, if present, present, always opposes motion. Okay, that's why we drew it facing that other way, right? Yeah, so there is a net force. You can't just ignore the friction on this. Yeah. And Newton's second law rules. Oh, how can we find the force of friction? Do it. Okay, so we know that uh, New one of Newton's first law, force net equals force one plus force two. What are our forces here? Well, we've got the force of friction. friction which we don't know. I'm going to start with this one first, actually. Force of gravity plus the force of friction, which we don't know. And it's going the opposite direction, right? Yeah. So it's going to be negative. Now, don't we have some of these? Well, the net force causes an acceleration. So we have the actual acceleration. It's 0 0.60 meters per second. Yeah. So you, and so we have the net force. Yeah, it's right there, 0.162 newtons. Yeah, so we have the net force that actually caused the acceleration. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Uh, 0.162 newtons. And that equals, what was our force of gravity? Well, let's see. It was um, 0.2 kilograms times 10. That's 0.2 newtons. Okay. Um, plus this negative force of friction. How can we solve for the force of friction? Let's move that over there, right? Yep. 0.162 minus 0.2. And I get, well, actually, let me go ahead and just do this like this. I'm going to say 0.162 newtons minus 0.2 newtons gets me the force of friction. When I plug that into my calculator, the answer I get is... Actually, I'm right on the other side. Negative 0.038, which makes sense because our answer was supposed to be negative, right? Boom! Sweet. Don't forget your units, Miss Moore. So, boys and girls, do you understand how we just found the force of friction? Let's we, take a step back here. Where how do how do we know the net force? How do we know the net force was 0.162 newtons? So we knew the net force was 0.126 newtons because. Um, we fa we had the experimental acceleration, which we calculated using our yep, that machine. Yep, in right? included the friction. Mm -hmm. And we and we multiplied that by, and it, that's really important. It included the friction. That's why we can't use this. Yep. Right. We that's use this because we're including the friction. Yep. Um, and then our mass is just the um, the car the cart and the the little hanging down thing <laughs> added together. That's it. Right. So. So that's where the net force came from. Yeah. And then how about my. Um, my force of gravity. Where does that come from? Mass times acceleration due yeah. to gravity. This is stuff you guys know how to do. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. Just got to piece it together. And then we get our uh, force of friction, which is a negative um, 0 0.38. So that means that if this is 0 0.038 this way, our force of gravity was 0 0.2 newtons. Don't forget your units, Ms. Moore. 
this one's bigger than this one, it makes sense that it's going to. So draw in the net force arrow and then draw in an acceleration arrow. Yeah, so my acceleration should be that one. That direction and the net force should be that direction. It's also this way. Boom! And we know that, it falls. It accelerates that way. Yep. Okay. What's that, do we, we got some more stuff here? Oh yeah, go backwards. Oh. One more. Oh, we've done it. Here's an assignment for you. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, practice problem. A one kilogram mass rests on a frictionless surface connected to a 0.2 kilogram mass hanging from a pulley. Make a sketch. It'll look a lot like this thing right here. Oh. Yes. Over there be the one kilogram. Uh -huh. Over here be the point two. Make a sketch with all. Uh, make a sketch with all forces included. Go ahead. Do it. I don't think you need to show them. Oh, they can do it, Romer. I think I think they can do it their own bed cell. <laughs> do it. Okay. And make a sketch to straighten the string, including forces. We did that just a minute ago. You could go back on the video and see how we do it. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the string. Find the force that, find the acceleration. Pause this while you do it. Mm -hmm. Now there is a coefficient of friction. We're giving you mu of a 0.3. What is the force of friction? What is the net force? What is the acceleration? <sighs> do it. It's all about the diagram, y'all. Do it. All right. 